Yes, yes. How you doing? Are you here for hearing today, sir? Yes, sir. For what prop 43 North Garnett? I, I missed that, Phil. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, present in the room today is the appellant for uh, case number two, 2743 North Garnett Street, Romenzo, Canada. Okay. Okay. All right, is Tom in? He is joined and he's in the room, but I haven't seen okay. him. Oh, there, there he is. is. There he's up here. I'm here. Okay. We'll get started. First, though, uh, Mr. Uh, Romenzo, uh, could you please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Respond. Oh, you're on mute. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I'm not a judge. <laughs> oh, oh. You. Just say yes, that's all. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Tom, could you please, your, please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth? Yes. Okay. My name's Wayne Miller. I'm a board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ted, you're okay. muted. Ted, you're muted. Sorry, caught me by surprise. Hey. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ted Agus, board member. Prime Secretary, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Jay Scoria, department license inspections. Okay, so who would like to start the case? Tom, you good with it? Uh, Can you read this one in first, sir? Oh, I'm sorry, right. got it. Put Not it off for the record. I'm sorry. Am I? 2024-003-858 for the property 2743 North Garnett Street. Okay, do you want to do it, Tom, or Mr. Canada wants to go first? Uh, I'll defer to the appellant, and, and then I'll I'll do an opening statement. Okay, Mr. Canada, could you tell us what the story is with the building? Yes. Okay, I was uh, recently get, getting the, the property uh, re redone. I had some foundation problems in the back. So I had got the contractors to knock the back of the house down while they was bricking the house. I was while they was bricking the house back up, you know, to the roof. My uh, money fell short. So while I was, you know, getting my funds together and, you know, working overtime and stuff like that, trying to get money back for the contractors to resume work. Uh, the second floor was just exposed. So uh, I could understand why the neighbors or the city came out, you know, to put a sticker on a, on a property. Uh, uh, I truly understand that. I mean, you know, no property in the city should be left, you know, unsecure like that or, uh, you know, open as, as well. But uh, I do want to let you guys know that I, I had hired an architect and an engineer to come out to uh, make sure that the house was, you know, you know, getting rebuilt and it was a safe, safe property. Uh, I did send the documents over to, to the to the email that I was sent from Phil, uh, phil.moto at philly.gov. And I also sent the email to megan.flay at philly.gov. I don't know if uh, you guys received it, but uh, that's basically just, you know, what I was going through with this property. I was, you know, trying to fix the foundation in the back. It was a tree growing out of the chimney. So in order to, you know, have a you know a, a family rent the home i had to bring it back up to par and that's basically what i was trying to do my money my funds just got you know slowed up in the process mr Canada, what is it like now is it is the tree and all going or is it yes is... The, the, the 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 tree the tree and everything is gone the uh the contractors i had actually brick brick the house up from the from the basement to to the second floor so right now um, as as of now today, the the house is from from the second floor to the roof. Only the back is 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 uh, exposed. Okay. Do you have any photos? So I'll get I'll get to that in my opening statement. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Mister Canada? Yes, I, I I do have photos in my in my phone as as, as well. The like the whole process of the guy of the guys, you know. Uh, don't doing the work from uh start until I was uh able to well start until my my finish point where my money slowed up but uh I, I do have pictures uh I have documentations from my uh architect and uh engineer and uh 
I, I understand. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I understand. Uh, you know, I tried to get this thing done in a you know a matter of time, and uh, you know, I, I should have just came down and, and took care of things how I was supposed to get, you know, how they were supposed to get taken care of, and uh, you know, doing things. I learned from this situation, you know, doing things how you're not supposed to be, you know, how you're not supposed to do it, it just end up like this, you know, and this is the, this is my, uh, you know, repercussions of not doing things the right way. And uh, I truly want to be compliant with the, uh, you know, L and I, uh, I got to stay safe. Like I said, I sent documents mm -hmm. over from my licensed engineer and architect. And uh, from here on out, I just want to be compliant with the city and, you know, just get this project done and just move on with my life. And, uh, projects here in the future so just to clarify um at this point you have an architect and engineer involved and uh but they weren't involved at the point where you were initially doing the work and and bricking up the back of the where the contractor it was only with the contractor at that point is that what you're saying yes sir okay okay so good sir could I do? A, could I respond in an opening statement before we go into testimony? Yes, sure. Go ahead. So what I have is I have the property at twenty seven forty three North Garnett Street. It's a perfect example of permitted or unpermitted work being done at the property, causing an eminently dangerous situation. You all, you'll see through my photographs um, that the property was declared eminently dangerous in May. Uh, May on or around May 6th of 2024, with a notice being posted to the property and notice being sent. That notice listed that an appeal must be filed by May 12th of 2024 uh, to this administrative board. Uh, the property then, uh, due to the eminently dangerous situation at the property, the property was placed for bid for demolition on or around May 21st of 2024, with the department in contact with Mr. Canada, where the department made reference and said that because the property was placed to bid for demolition, it was um, provided that the owners would need to file a action in the Court of Common Pleas. That action was ignored. Uh, and then on May 21st of 2024, uh, a appeals hearing was scheduled or was filed uh, in front of this board as demolition was not um, placed or is has been placed on hold pending this board's ruling. But it is the belief of the department that due to the late filing, this this appeal should be denied in its entirety. And with that, I'll show my photographs. All right, let's see the photographs. <clears throat> Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes, sir. So this is a photograph of the posting that was affixed to the property. I'll have to wait because the uh, the network it waits for a second. All right. It's got a bad, it's got a bad lag, lag time. There we go. Yeah. So this is the back of the property. You can see that it's, the front of the property with the posting affixed to it is on the right hand side. And then this is the back of the property. You can see that the entire breezeway wall has been removed and there's a small section of CMBU or concrete masonry units that have been installed. No idea how that's being supported. So essentially you have an unsupported second and second story and roof assembly uh, at the rear of this property. This is another photograph of the of the property. This photograph was taken by Inspector Stallworth on May 6th of 20, 
on or around May 6th of 2024. Tom, is, is the second floor there in that picture, there's nothing underneath it? We what don't have any, any indication that anything has been installed uh, to support the weight loads carrying the second floor and the roof assembly. I'm, I'm... Go ahead, Mr. County, you got something to say? Yes, sir. I have I have pictures of the I have pictures and videos of the inside of, of my home, where 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 uh the contractors joist the the uh brace the first floor and the second floor as well, just to prevent the roof the roof from falling while these got uh, while the contractors were doing the demolition. So uh, the guys they they first they they uh braced the first floor, which they uh ran uh beams and uh beams and studs through the first floor to, to, to hold up the, the second floor. Then they went on the second floor to did beams and studs to hold up the roof and the, and the second floor. Uh, I could. Are they a licensed contractor that you have with the city? No, no. Do they, do they have a structural engineer with their company? I'm sorry. Say that again, sir. Do they have a structural engineer with the co at the company that you hired to do this work? Yes, I believe so. I, I I'm I'm not certain. The name of the construction company is Able Construction. Uh, uh, do you, um, are you prepared to submit what your architect and engineer have done for a make safe permit? So yes, my, uh, I'm go sorry. ahead, Mr. Canada. I'm sorry. No, I'm Mr. Canada. I had I had sent I had sent the documents over to the uh, emails that I was given yesterday, uh, Philly Philly Moto Phil Moto at uh, Philly .gov and Megan Flat at Philly .gov. You need a you need a uh, registered contractor with the city also to pull the permit. Do you have that? Yes, Mr. Canada. So just just I'm still sharing my screen. Is this okay. the is this the document that you're referring to that you sent to Mr. Motto and Miss Flade. Yes. Okay. So this is a license for a expediter. This is not a license for a contractor. This is a this is a license for a consultant service. Expediter a expediter slash consultant service has nothing to do with an actual contractor. And then you attached on your on your emailing you attached a some sort of a quote. And this quote is dated May 17th. It, that would be approximately 30 days ago. And again, this is all unpermanent work on a property that has caused an, un, an eminently dangerous situation. Anybody that can go into this property, anybody that's standing on the first floor of this property could end up in an eminent situation. The entire property could fall on them from unpermitted, unsafe work practices. And we've posted the property and you were instructed that the, and the property was placed out to bid for demolition. You were instructed to file a court action at another jurisdiction and then you filed it for at this board. With that said, I will rest and the board should deny this appeal in its entirety. Thank you. Excuse Excuse me, hello. Guy, you're yes. we can hear you. Yeah, uh, th this is this is all of the paperwork that I had from the from the engineer and the architect that's that's doing to stay safe. Uh, for for the the property of twenty seven forty three Garnet Street. Um, I just uh, so I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not. You're, you're saying that is the paperwork that you have. What yes, you just the, us is all you have. The 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 late the, the lady that I'm I'm dealing with Zakia. She she's licensed and she she's licensed of. She she went to my property and she 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 had an architect with her and you, and and they, they they said they was making a stay safe. I had paid her paid her money for for this. Yeah, I mean this is not an I'm, I'm an architect. This is not an architectural situation. You need an, a a structural engineer, and she should have had if she knows what she's doing. She should have had a structural engineer there with her. They should have been, you know, that, everything that's necessary in order to pull a make safe permit. 
uh, other than having a licensed contractor to actually do the work. But it, it sounds like you have been misled and, um, you know, uh, throwing good money after bad. Um, so, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, to the young man I just was speaking to, so the the documents that 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 I, I sent over to the emails, you're, you're saying is not from a licensed um, architect. I'm saying that the information that we received yesterday via emailing, yes, it only has a license that is actually current for one more week. And that license is held by a expediter slash consultant firm. So it is a license for an expediter. It is mm -hmm. not the license of a licensed contractor, nor a license for a engineer that is licensed to be able to do work in the city of Philadelphia. It doesn't solve anything in the way of remedying this eminently dangerous situation. And with that said, that's where we're at. I'm petitioning to the board to deny it in its entirety. If the board renders a decision granting time, we have to abide by that. But as far as as far as the department's belief is, we've placed this property out to bid for demolition. The demolition contractor is on hold pending this hearing. If the board denies it, we will proceed with demolition of the property uh, and send it to our contractor. If not, then we will follow the, the board's ruling. It, Mr. Canada, first of all, these people duped you. They all they do is they expedite to try to get things done to the board or whatever else they're doing to, to get it done faster. That has nothing to do with your issues are. Your issues are your building is eminently dangerous. It can fall down at any minute. And the thing is, is that at this board, we are consistent, okay? We can't allow a building to fall down. And what happens is, is we give Tommy or the city, y'all and I, the okay to tear that building down. And we have to deny your claim because it's been so long. And it's in such bad dis dis disrepair that it could kill anybody at any, any, any second. And uh, that building could just crumble uh, because there's no nothing there with bearing walls to take care of it. So, yes. and if your consultant understood the process, and this is the May seventeenth, I believe you were saying, Tom. Mm -hmm. I mean, would have known you had ten days at that point to have a structural engineer file a report and a, uh, that showing what work needed to be done in order to get a make safe permit. To, and, and a contractor would have to be on board. That should have happened two weeks ago. And I, if they didn't know that, I assume that when their license expires next week, they will not be getting a new one. And it puts you in, in, in this position that we have no alternative. I, and I, I hope I'll speak, well, I'll, I'll go into a caucus and speak to Amy and Ted, and then we'll come back with our decision, okay? Uh, Phil, can you put us in a breakout room or let's go to the breakout room? After our discussion, Mr. Canada, we uh, we tend to feel that we have to deny this uh, this appeal, and um, you know after this, you could take it up with the board of Admin administration, and they'll tell you what your rights are going forward. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's where we're at, Mr. Mr. Canada. Uh, we're going to deny the appeal. Okay. Okay. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. Good luck with what you're doing.
Okie dokie, that's one. All right, do we have anybody for 6635 Cornelius yet? We do not. Uh, I personally attempted to contact the appellant on the 12th. There was no answer, but I did leave a message. But I did speak to the attorney that was listed and informed them of the hearing today and provided them with all the information, but no one is here. The attorney said it was such an old case. They're not positive. They are still retained by the appellant for this matter. Was Joanne Hoff the attorney? Uh, Joanne Hoff is the appellant. Rachel the Bush and Michael Freelich were the attorneys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure. They're not here. They were supposed to be here at uh, one o'clock, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we go ahead with the case? Due yeah. to the due to the case's age and the unsafe condition at the property, um, I would like to proceed with the hearing uh, and then um, okay. deal with the department recommendation uh, at the conclusion of the uh, okay. uh, and follow through on the hearing. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, we're going to do uh, at Cornelius Street. Okay. Uh, Tom, could you please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ted Ivers, board member. Brian McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Dave Scoria, department license inspections. Okay, Phil, can you read that into the record? Yes, this is MI 2022-005-049 for the property located at 6635 Cornelia Street. Joanne Hoff is the appellant. There's no one in the room by that name, and there's no one in the waiting room by that name. Okay, we're going to proceed with the case. The case was scheduled for 1 o'clock. It's actually 1.31, and no one's here. So, uh, Tom, could you let us know what's going on with the case? What we have is the property at 6635 Cornelius has been deemed unsafe for conditions in the rear of the property. I'll share my screen so you can uh, so the uh, administrative board can see the um, conditions uh, that warranted the unsafe uh, designation, and then uh, make my uh, appeal to the board. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. So in the interest of time, I went straight to the photographs that were in the packet. This shows right. the rear second story bay of the property. I'll zoom it. I'll uh, enlarge it. Okay. So you, you can see the, the yeah, conditions yeah. of the bay. As you can see, it's deteriorating to the point where it's affecting the structural ability <laughs> of the second uh, of the first and second story rear bay of the property. Um, it's the case is relatively um has some length to it. Uh, the area inspector, um, we didn't know of the appeal that was filed. Uh, the area inspector actually did his reinspections and asked for this to be sent over to the Court of Common Pleas. While we did our research, we found the appeal um, and uh, asked that this be uh, scheduled in front of the board. Um, with that said, uh, it's my belief and my um, testimony to the board that a variance be granted for 60 days to obtain a make safe permit for the repair. 60 days to get a make safe permit. Yes. Uh, how about if they don't get in touch with you within the 60 days? Then the department would seek um, sending this property over to the Court of Common Pleas program uh, to try to um, achieve compliance and get the property repaired. Okay. Uh, 60 days to get a make safe permit. Uh, Aim and Ted, are you good with it? I just want to understand, Tom, is the bay actually cantilevering out or is it sitting over that wall that's under it? It's a head on view, so I can't really tell. No, it looks like they're flush. It looks like it's, it's not cantilevered over. It looks like both the second, it, it looks like both the first and second story bay are even. And is the first floor portion of it wood frame? And is that what's missing under the bay? Uh, it looks like there's um, asphalt shingle that are starting to peel off and it's affecting the structure underneath. Which is wood frame. Like. 
I, I would believe so, yes. All right, I'm okay with 60 days for a make safe. Ted? You're on mute. You're mute, Ted. Sorry, uh, I'm fine with that. Okay, all right, that's good. 60 days, make hey. safe permit. If not, do what you gotta do if you don't get contact in 60 days. Hey, sorry, just one, one question. Tom, is the property occupied? It appears to be, yes. All right. Okay. Anybody else in the in the waiting room? Uh, Mr. Miller, the next appellants are not due until two o'clock. We do have okay. the two executive session matters. If you wanted to address those, okay, let's address them. Yeah. That's it for me. Enjoy the rest Thanks, of the Tom. day. Enjoy the weekend. See you now. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat> um, let me just pause this and. Mr. Mr. Kelly, we're back back on the record. Okay. Yes, sir. Right, we're, we're back on the record. Okay. What we'll do uh, for the for the next case, uh, eleven thousand to, to uh, or one thousand to one thousand ten North Delaware Avenue. Uh, uh, we're um, draining the the variance, uh, and uh, I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ted Ivey's board member. Ryan McSherry, okay. board council. Bill, can Bill, you read that into the record? J Square Department License Inspections. Okay. Yes, sir. These are matters MI 2024-002086 for the property 1000 to 1010 North Delaware Avenue and MI 2024-003047 for for the property located at 2043 through 2051 North Front Street. Good. Very granted. Okay, good deal. That's it. All right, so now we're waiting. We don't record this. We don't need a recording for this. Truth, the whole truth, not... Uh, could you guys please raise your right hand swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I swear. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ted Agus, board member. John Dimes, fire code. Brian McSherry, board council. Philip Motto, board's administration. Jay Scoria, department license inspections. Okay, Phil, could you read that in the record? Yes, sir. This is MI 2024-002-989. <laughs> For the property located at 155 West Palmer Street, the appellant was Permit Philly LLC and Mr. Eric Madsen. We have Brett Madsen here in the in the room today. Hi, I'm Eric Madsen. Uh, Eric Brett Madsen is my full name. I'm sorry, it's my parents' fault, but <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, whoever's going to present the case, go ahead. Uh, I'll start, uh, and then for questions about the property history, we can turn it over to John. So the code question is relatively simple. Um, we're asking for a variance for R310.6. Uh, the Philadelphia version of this regulation says that, um, and I'm gonna look to the side because that's where my monitor is. So uh, it says that alterations or repairs of existing basements uh, in such repairs an emergency exit, escape and rescue opening is not required for existing basements undergoing repairs where such alterations or repairs do not increase the existing story height of the basement. Uh, the 2018 IRC has the same regulation, except it doesn't have that note about increasing the existing story height. So we're asking to comply with the uh, regulation that says, as long as you don't have a sleeping unit down there, you can make these alterations without an emergency egress. Um, this is a alteration to a basement that is not intended for a sleeping unit, um, but the, and I think this started under the previous owner, John, you can confirm this, but uh, the basement height was raised. So that's why we're looking for a BBS variance. That's correct. Yeah, and I can provide some more context. Um, my wife, Kylie, and I, we live on the street and we purchased the home 155, a few down from ours, the entirety of our time living on this street since 2020. This property had been sitting vacant. Um, we purchased it to rehab and, and um, intend to move into this property. 
Um, we were not involved in any of the modifications that were made, and we've been working with Brett to try to bring um, these up to code and, and get these uh, this 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 property legal. Um, it is not our intention at all to use this basement as a living quarters. It will be used for dry storage, and it'll be used as a uh, a laundry room. But it's not a bedroom by any means, so that's why we're. Um, requesting this variance. We did not, we, and we're not involved in the extension of the basement. Jace, what's the, what, what, is that correct that if you don't have a sleeping area that? Well, what happened was the previous owner uh, did alterations to lower the basement and that's what causes um, emergency escape and rescue to be required. I'm guessing these owners just bought the property and um, unfortunately, we're stuck with that violation, basically. And that's kind of, uh, you know, what we do is if, you know, when people usually lower basements, we require emergency escape and rescue. But I think Brett said that in his, in his documentation that it was it's tough to put a emergency escape and rescue based on the existing configuration. Um, maybe you want to share the plans, Brett, or I can share them? Yeah, you can share them. Um, there will be... There's enough space in the front, but that would be a considerable extra expense. And then the rear, there's not really enough space to get a, the kind of egress you would need. Um, again, John, if you want to elaborate on that at all, you can. Yeah, I mean, we had to go down a, a variance process for zoning as well. Um, the property sits on a very small lot. There's not the space in the rear does, does not exist to put this egress out there. If we did have to put one, it would have to go into the front. And as Brett mentioned, this would create an additional considerable expense and delays in the project um, related to obtaining the city's approval to put one of these up front. But the International Building Code, like Brett mentioned, only seems to require this in instances where this basement is leveraged as a basement. And again, that is not our intention. We, we don't have this configured as a basement in any way. Basements would be doors and closets. Um, when you say uh, configure as a basement, uh, do you mean bedroom? Bedroom. I apologize. Thank you for correcting me. Yes. Do you have any pictures of the, of the, of the basement? Well, I have a question. The pictures that are on the permit set, are they as it was when, when it was bought? The wood studs up in the basement? The wood studs. There might be waterproofing on the wall. The water, so I, I do intend to finish the basement, um, but it will not be leveraged as a bedroom. Uh, no, but the, I'm asking the concerned. pictures that are on the permit set. Is that how it is when it was bought? I can share them, um, and then uh, John can narrate right over here. Yeah. Um, so I'll hold them up right here. Give me just one moment to share. I'm sorry. Do I have the option to share from my end? I'm not seeing it. Yeah, it should be a rectangle with the arrow pointing up. When you click on it, it's not letting you share. Uh, it, I, it, may be, it may be under more if you're not on full screen. I am on full screen. I do not see the rectangle. It's a green button in the middle. Uh, got uh, Sorry, I don't know if I was entirely colorblind or if uh, I just appeared now. But uh, let me get you the bracket. Yeah, there it is. And we'll show that. Okay. Right. Can everyone see this uh, this packet over here? Yes. Okay. So there's a the house. Let's get down. Uh, so here's the rear extension. Um, and this is the amount of space you have for any ingress. Uh, right here. What stage is this, John, in the construction? This the, the framing was done after purchase. Um, that so I, I think Amy to answer your question, the framing was done after the walls were there as we purchased it. We didn't do any of the underpinning. It was purchased that way. But the framing that you see there, that was done after the fact. And this is a closet in my laundry room, but it's an open space from the upstairs to the downstairs. There will be no door in place there and, and this is uh, i mean this is not the basement any longer brett no oh, sorry <laughs> yeah you're right we've been up there okay so let's go back to the main view of the basement but yeah so 
the intention is on the frame side where you have that narrow wall, that's where the utilities will be stored. Um, and then I plan to tile the floor in this right side. And I have a washer and dryer down there and um, we'll be using the rest of the basement for storage. The ladder where you see there, uh, I mean, we've since had building permits, that, that's the staircase. So um, there will be no door from like uh, the first floor to this basement. It will be an open space. So you'll have access straight up to the first floor without a door restricting anything. So did you put the plumbing, because the plumbing is obviously done after the underpinning is done. The plumbing? That, yeah, that plumbing, soil line is... That four inch? Yes. Um, it was connected after the fact because it was dumping water into the basement when I purchased it. So I had a four inch coming in and a drain out back that was dumping water in. So this was connected to the other four inch cast iron pipe that sits in that top left corner. That's all that was done. And then the violations were issued on the property and we began working with breath to get these cleared. So has anybody checked the underpinning? Drilled holes? I know it says it on your permit set, but that really should have been done. But you're just trusting what somebody else did. Yes, and we are working with an engineer and Brett to get that resolved. So we have an engineer contracted, Mark Johansson, and he is out there. But this is the last piece in getting the excavation permit approved, is getting this exception. And then we're able to get Mark out there to perform the site inspection and go from there. Yeah. So we did visit the property. And, and Brett, if you want to expand on that anymore. The, the way this is going to be sequenced is we apply for the building permit um for these renovations at one of the outer floors and the basement and uh i pushed shane mcculty took it over and he said okay i can't give you um i have to send you to bbs for the egress well but um i can improve the upper floors so now we split it up into a few different ones so this parent this sorry permit will be the parent permit of an excavation permit which is already separately approved we just have to get this one approved, and we can get that one issued, and that includes the pre-construction survey and the uh, engineer's reports to check on um, all the work that was done before. Okay. If money is the issue, I mean, you're, you're finishing this basement. You're talking about tiling it, drywalling it. It's going to get used. And say you lived there for five years, you sell it. Somebody else is going to use it as a family room, a bedroom. You don't know. I think there should be an egress well. I'd rather see you invest the money in an egress well and finish it later than do all this work now and not have an egress well. But that's my thought. If it's a money issue. I personally would have made sure that the underpinning was done well a long time ago before starting all this work. Right. Have it all studded out. No one's drilled holes to see if underpinning underpinning can be done very poorly, and it's problematic. And if nobody checked this, I, I wouldn't have started putting up studs in front of it. Um, just check it. The engineer did come out and create yeah. a report that's filed with the excavation permit. What did he do to check it? I have to look at the full report and I can pull it up or send it over if you want me to. No, it, it, I'm just saying I'd, I'd rather see the money spent on an egress well versus finishing that basement. Can, can you show uh, the plan where an egress well would go, um, you know, front or back? Or just no, back isn't an option because there's no alley in the back. Okay. So no. be in the front. Let's just let it uh, um, plan. Putting, I'm looking at the zoning plan for it. Let me start. I can also pull up if you'd like me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So here's the underpinning sequence of the notes about work that was done before and what's verified by the engineer. 
Went back out a little. No, I think they're looking for a site plan to show the location of if they will going to propose an egress well. So do you have a zoning plan, a site plan, or anything, Brett? Uh, give me one moment. All right, so there's the site. Okay. Yeah, so the backyard is very small, and I think getting into the backyard doesn't help us at all. Right. Yeah. I can't hear you. <laughs> the backyard is very small, and getting into the backyard yeah. doesn't help you. Thanks. Yeah, so backyard's not going to work. Um, here is the basement plan. So the front just opens onto the sidewalk. Do you have any idea how wide the sidewalk is? It's narrow sidewalk. I think it's there's two blocks of cement. I know it's too small to put a tree on the street. We're one of the smaller blocks, so. Um, I have my staircase, and then I probably have three feet in front of that to the curb. So I would say six feet, but that's an estimate. Can you zoom in on that? There's a dimension there. We can zoom in. in so yes, but this is for the basement. This isn't for the... Um, oh, it's an elevation. Okay. Right. That's not the... Uh, and so if you do the site plan there, I'm less... That step, that step right there it says three foot, two and a half. Well, a step, but it doesn't yeah. tell me where the curb is. Sorry, yeah. And what's the size of a well that would be required? Is that is that also three feet? I'm going off the top of my head. I haven't checked the regulation, but I think it is 36 inches. Yeah, well, I'm asking Chase. Um, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, I mean, in any event, it uh, usually uh, well, it goes well out. Wouldn't you, well, wouldn't extend out any further than the. Uh, it than won't. The, it won't extend out more than thirty-six. So, yeah. so basically, at either of those existing openings, there's the opportunity to put one in there, and uh, I agree with Amy. It's, um, you know, it's the advantage of a uh, finished room that you'll have flexibility. Your future owners will have flexibility. Okay. And Ted, Amy, if, if you don't mind, can I just respond to that? Um, the model of the basement is monitor or is, is is based off of the house that I currently live in, 161 West Palmer Street. And on 161 West Palmer Street, we have a fully permanent property with a full finished basement. The tiling, that's because that's the same basement that I have here. It's just that the only reason that you're saying that I believe I need an egress in this house is because there's an extra foot and a half of height, but the idea of, I have a six foot basement that's fully finished and I have no egress and, and that's um, perfectly allowed by the city. But because I purchased a property that had been sitting abandoned on my street for as long as I've been here, it's been an eyesore and a danger. Now all of a sudden this basement will require something that my basement four houses down, legally permanent, listed on Philadelphia's website as a full finished basement does not require an egress because the code does not say that it needs one. So that's why we believe that a, a variance is, is very reasonable here. I'm sorry, what, what website is listing this as a full finish? Uh, Philadelphia Properties, property.phila.gov. Okay, that, that, so that's a real estate website that, um, again, it's... it's Fully permitted, but it's not. Uh, it, it doesn't have the requirement in your existing house because it doesn't have the uh, the, the height. So it's the two different buildings. And you technically weren't supposed to finish your basement with a six foot ceiling. We purchased this one as I, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. About the, it's also just used as storage. The space of the finished basement, tile basement. Um, I remember been for a while in a new construction basement that had this design. Um, there was ground construction, so there was no issues of uh, retrofitting, and it did have um, 
the ingress well, but uh, it had the the same setup where there's no door to the downstairs and solid wood along the open space. And um, I think the entire row was like that. Uh, again, newer construction up in Fish Town, but it didn't. Um, I don't know. It wasn't. It didn't seem to me. I didn't want it, but it didn't seem to be inevitable that someone would need to turn that into a bedroom. Um, again, it's newer. It did have an ingress well in the back, but uh, it seemed fine to just use as uh, storage space and utilities. And a little bit of a workout room. If I recall correctly. One other clarification, uh, Jace. Um, it doesn't appear that there is a door at between the second and first and second floor either, um, other than just into that well, is that the fact that there's three uh, floors connected without uh, without a door, uh, is that? No, it's single family dwelling, it's fine. You can, okay, fine. Um, you wanna call this to Damien? Sure. Okay. Okay, after our deliberations, we feel that an egress well is uh, needed and uh, we're going to deny the variance. Uh, that's where we're at, guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, at what time will we get the notice of that decision, approximately? Bill, about two weeks. Okay. Yes, sir. Yep, about two weeks. Okay, guys. Is there anything that this group's able to do to expedite an approval by the Department of Streets in order to get that approved? It's like, what is there? A, I'm going to have to put an egress out front. I'm just curious. This is a general question. If for some reason Streets tells you you don't have enough room, we can work with you on that. Um, but I, I don't think we can push Streets. And, and we don't think that uh, the uh, clearance will be an issue. But again, without having that dimension to the curb, uh, we don't know for sure. Know. If we, since we live on the street, if we get it to you right now, would you be able to tell us approximately if there is enough room or not? Or is that streets? It, it's That's streets does that. It's called, yeah. Yeah. I mean, luckily, you don't have any trees or it looks like fire hydrants or anything right in front of the yeah. house. So that helps. Running on the sidewalk, yeah. 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 You you'll receive something in the mail in about two weeks. Okay. All right, oh. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your time. Okay, no problem. Bye. All right. Mr. Miller, do you mind if I inquire about the last case for today? You're ready to roll. Is anyone here going to represent the interests of 100 Chestnut Street? And who is here to represent them? Uh, this is William Dion here on behalf of uh, JAR Waterfront 2 LP, okay. who is the owner of uh, 100 Chestnut Street. Are you going to be the only one uh, testifying today, William? No, and I am an attorney. I have the architect of record with me, and I also have a representative of the owner. Oh, is the architect of record going to be testifying and the owner? Yes. Yes, okay. they what's, will. Okay. What's the owner's name? Jeffrey Reinhold. Jeffrey. Okay. Move. And the next guy, the architect? It would be Morris Clark. Morris. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to swear, swear everybody in. I don't have to swear the lawyers in because they never ever lie. They're always telling the truth. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, William, we'll do you first. Could you please raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Uh, he's a lawyer. I, first, William, he, are you a lawyer, lawyer, William? Yes, I am. And I apologize. I'm having trouble with my camera right now, so I can't turn it oh, on. Oh, you're down there. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right, so we don't have to swear you in. Okay. Yeah, I uh, always Mars, tell the truth. Mars, could you please raise your right hand? Swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Jeffrey. Can you please raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Wayne Miller, board member. Amy Rivera, board member. Ted Agus, board member. John Dimes, fire code. Ryan McSherry, board council. 
Philip Motto, Boards Administration. Jay Scurrier, Department of License Inspections. Bill, could you read that into the record, please? Yes, sir. This is MI 2024-002991 for the property located at 100 Chestnut Street. JAR Waterfront 2 LP is the appellant in the present room. Okay, whoever's going to present the case, please do. Sure. And again, this is William Dion, and I, I apologize, my camera's not turning on, so... Um, That's okay, I'd William, like no problem. This. Uh -huh. Okay. So, um, members of the board, again, uh, William Dion here on behalf of JAR, JAR Waterfront Roman numeral 2 LP, that is the owner of 100 Chestnut Street. It's also commonly referred to as 106 South Front Street, as it sits on the corner of Chestnut and Front Street. So you will see those two addresses used at different times. The property is currently used or utilized. It's a four-story building. The top three floors, floors two, three, and four, are used for residential purposes. There's currently 14 residential units in those um, per floors. Bottom floor is used for commercial and office space. Um, the permits in question deal with the conversion of a portion of the lower floor, the first floor, into residential units. Um, a little brief history for the for the board, just because it uh, sets how we arrived at here today. Um, the applicant, uh, through their contractor and the architect, applied for both a building and zoning permit to make the conversion I'm speaking of to convert a portion of the first floor from office and commercial space into two new residential units. Those permits were issued in November 29th of 2022, both the building and the zoning permit. It's worth noting that the building permit specifically noted uh, building is not required to be sprinklered. <clears throat> the work commenced, um, the work was inspected, and ultimately the city issued a certificate of approval January 4th, 2024 for the closeout of the work. And again, that certificate of approval noted the building is not required to be sprinklered. Um, then the uh, applicant or the owner uh, applied for a rental license, um, was advised that a certificate of occupancy had to be issued in order to obtain the rental license. The certificate of occupancy was applied for. And at that time, the reviewer noted um, the requirement to sprinkle the entire building. Um, we've had some conversations and we made this appeal to the board for two, real, two reasons. One, um, we believe that section 803.2.2 .2 of the IEBC actually provides an exception for when the um, sprinkling of the building is required. Um, in particular, if there's a change in use category, which there actually is in this matter, we're obviously changing from office commercial to residential. So it does trigger that, but the second requirement is it has to be at least 50% of the floor area and the bottom floor or the first floor is 4,768 square feet. And the work area of the conversion was 1,351 square feet, so only 28%. So we believe that that exception is applicable, and therefore the code does not require the unit to be sprinkled or the entire building. Um, and that is the uh, uh, purpose of the appeal. And I have the owner and the architect here to answer any questions from the board. Great. Uh, Jace, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the rule for that? Is that AO three AO? So that's that's for level two alterations, but because it's a change of occupancy, you go under chapter ten, and if you go to section one zero zero four point one, even if portions of the building undergo a change of occupancy, you have to go to chapter nine of the IBC, and that requires sprinkler coverage. I can share so, the screen real quick. Would, would right. you say the permit was written in error? I'm trying to look to see what happened for that permit, but this is the code section I was talking about. I don't know, William, can you see that? Uh, not yet. Not up yet, Jason. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, it's right here. So, when it's a change of occupancy, you go to chapter 10, I mean, you go to section 1004 for fire protection. Um, it says right here, or portions yeah. of the building undergo a change of occupancy, you would have to go to chapter nine of the International Building Code. And when you go to chapter nine of the International Building Code. Okay. All right, what's your architect have to say about that? Morris Clark here. Um, we had understood the way the IBC, uh, the existing building code read that the exception um, based on our discussions with our uh, mechanical contract our mechanical engineer as well was that we were under the 50 percent threshold threshold um 
and therefore did not require the, the sprinkler coverage in these two units. Um, I do believe this first floor was most recently office. I think it was originally residential. We're, we are converting it back to what it uh, was originally. Um, I know there was a, 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 an office use at, at one point. And it is, I think, also worth noting that that entire kind of section of the building is is residential from now with the first floor to 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 the top level there is no um mixed use in that in in, in that area um the building uh each floor is separated per require per, per the code requirements we are all we also carry our proper separations from the lobby and and the adjacent buildings the, the neighboring buildings morris what's the current separation right now is it two hours or three hours uh it's I believe it's 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 a it's an existing masonry wall that's many white thick, so it probably carries a, 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 a at least a two hour um, separation between us and the uh, and the uh, retail tenant on the first floor. I apologize, I'm looking away. I'm just looking at existing drawings. So we have our we we have a one hour separation to our lobby, and then on because the lobby is to one side of us. Um, for one of the units, the other side is a is a completely different building, and that's a multi wife um, party wall, which is three hours. And then the second unit uh, at the toward the back of the space is also um, it's separated from another building on both sides for three hours. I hey, Jace, do me a favor. Hours. Can you pull up what the original use was there? Uh, they're saying it was residential, then it went to commercial, and then back to residential. Was that the issue when it was originally built? Well, this this building has a sprinkler system in the partially in the basement, correct? The the, the building, yeah. Hi, this is Jeff Reinhold. The building has a sprinkler system in the basement. It also has a standpipe connection and a standpipe that runs up through the uh, fire escape four stories. That's the fire suppression in the building. This 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 building was converted to apartments in approximate around 1978, so I think 77. And originally there were two apartments uh, in in this one, it's a little over a thousand square feet on the first floor. Um, subsequently, the use went to office and then uh, I just converted them back to two, two apartments, two brand new, completely brand new apartments. We got it this, well, the space was open. We got it and put two new apartments in. And is there access to a rear yard from the, uh, the back apartment? Yes, Ted, and, yes. And how, uh, what are the, dimensions of that roughly any idea <laughs> you know that that backyard is bigger than the apartment um and so i would say it's 800 square feet you know it's it's big it's a big space but not connected to an alley or another way no. okay no. no not connected to an alley yeah and 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 the and the and the front unit um has access through and through the lobby you know you and which was the permit that uh, somebody mentioned that is um, where uh, sprinklers were specifically not required? What was that? So that's the one I was looking at right now. So it looks like the examiner might have missed this one because he thought it was an existing dwelling unit there already. But I don't know how they would have missed the complete demo of what he approved. So... They, well, they also approved this, the zoning permit where we laid out on the zoning plan the actual... It was a conversion use, yeah. yeah. I saw that. Yeah, see, like right here, they even referenced adding two residential units and even called that conversion. So I'm not sure why that was not caught during the first review. It it There wasn't much demo work that was necessary. It was a completely open space. Mm -hmm. oh. And where are you in the construction now? Oh, it's Completed. it's complete. We, we were literally going for a rental license and then had to apply for the UNO 
and then this issue came up. So the place has been sitting vacant, ready to rent, but for a rental license. And usually what plan examiners do is if they if they believe that it's an existing residential unit, they thought um uh, they may have thought that a CO was already issued for this. So that's why they didn't include the CO as a part of this permit. And I think that's that's why it was caught during the second review when they came in for the CO. But originally they were they were told that they didn't have the sprinkler. Uh based on the first based on the first permit that was issued by LMI. Correct. Yeah, the, the permit specifically says it does not need to be sprinkled. Right. That was an error by the examiner. I, I mean, uh, I let's mean, caucus. The way uh, the point. Aim, uh, Ted, yeah. let's, let's, let's caucus. Uh, just before we do, I just, John Dimes, any uh, comments regarding this? Yeah, it's a, it's a unique situation, right? I mean, by right, it, it seems like you demo a place or even partially demo, even if it's open, you convert it. It's it calls for a sprinkler system to, to burden them with that at this particular point. It, it seems unfair. So, I mean, it, it's yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a it's a tough thing, a tough place to be in real quick. How many stories is this building again? Four stories. Four. 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 Yeah. Okay, and it, the only thing that's sprinklered is the basement. That's correct. And Plus you got you got standpipe. Standpipe? Is yeah. it is it dry standpipe? Yeah, there's a dry standpipe, John, that runs up through the fire tower and a connection out front. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I guess I'm not here to 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 be uh to make the decisions. That's the board's responsibility, but. All in all, I mean, this is this is two apartments. I mean, it's a total of two apartments going to be there again. I'm sorry, I'm we're we're rehashing some stuff. Is it, it's two apartments over a business, or is it completely just residential? It's two, it's two apartments above three stories of residential. So it will be the building will go from 14 residential units to 16. And does each of those residences on the first floor have their own exit to the sidewalk? It looks like they do. They exit. They exit through the the shared lobby, which um, the one of the egress stairs also exits. Well, so let have me, a floor plan of that that we can see. Can, can I just expand upon that? That uh, all of the tenants. There's two. There's an office tenant. There's a com, there's a dry cleaner, commercial tenant. Obviously, they come out to the street, <laughs> and the two apartments. One is into the lobby. Well, they're both into the lobby, but the rear unit can go back into that outdoor space. And does that access an alley or anything? I had trouble. Um, Amy, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Does that rear outdoor space access an alley or any no. way for them to escape? No, no, it does not. So, and I'm uh, real quick, J Jace. So, what should have happened it, initially? It should have been. Which, it, what should have happened was the whole been... building should have been sprinklered, right? Um. Exactly, based on how this based on how this is. Um, so because there's no separation, what they could have done was make it a separate building, you know, put it three hours on right the, on the portion that turned residential and just sprinkle that portion. But because this two hours, yeah, mm -hmm. because it's two hours, it's considered a an extension of a fire area. So that would require full sprinklage of the building. But you know. Um, the examiner that initially reviewed it thought this was apartments. I'm not sure why they would have missed, especially with the use permit it says literally conversion from business to residential. So, yeah, and then it's uh like you say that's a lot of units and a lot of space, a lot I mean, of life. Yeah, the units the units are existing that that are there that are in the, the three story portion. So if they right. would have put the, you know, if they if they just put that three hour separation, consider two separate buildings, then you know the board. Usually, just lets the those know, two based on the provides just those two units to be sprinkled. Right. Yeah, in this configuration, the the examiner missed this. Or is the appellant? Are you guys pr proposing that at all? Just trying to I, is there a way to do that to to make that a separate space with that three hour rating just to do that, or does that help you? Well, I, I guess the, the hard part is, you know, it's everything's built today. So that's the, you know, it, the comment, if it had come up during permit review, we could have modified the plans, but the space is fully built out and we're waiting to, you know, to rent it, but for a rental license, right, which needs a certificate of occupancy. So we're finding out about this at the, the, at the goal line. 
Yep. And there's no commercial there anymore. It's all residential, right? The, on the first floor, no, there is still some commercial on the first floor. Oh, I think, I think it, the, the commercial is not, there's not any commercial below. The, these are on the first floor. There's a, there's a, our, the residential lobby um, in between our, uh, the units, the residential units on the first floor and the, uh, the commercial space. Yeah, Morris, if you call up, uh, bring up the, uh, the drawing that you, can, can, you guys, can you guys see this plan? Yeah. Are you able to yes. see my screen? Yeah, but but there's another plan that shows the uh, corner, the you know the chestnut property along yep. with that. That would sort of show the relationship and where the commercial is. One second, hold on. the zoning diagram. Yeah. So is that plan front on Front Street or? Yes. Okay. The way what you're looking at there, that exit there, that that lobby, that that's Front Street. Yeah. The, the the only the only unit that uh, the one unit does that exit right onto Front Street. Yeah, that's the dry cleaner. Yeah, can, okay. you, can you see this plan? Yes, yeah. with the yellow highlight. So these are the two residential units here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the the residential lobby here. These are the elevators and the the stairs are here with their egress. Right. And then this is uh, these are the commercial spaces up here. Now there are apartments above this. But they exist. We didn't touch that portion on two, three, and four. There were always apartments over this existing. We at, we we converted this office space back to apartments. So just to further state that the um, the use of the of the commercial space in the front there at, on the corner is an office use. Uh, it's a mor mortgage broker, and then next to that is a tailor. Who also has dry cleaning? There's no dry cleaning done on premises. But in the in the yellow space, it says two residential units. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a door right from the one unit right to the street at the very yes, right there? There is yeah. a door that. Go, go ahead, Morris. I was just there, there is a door here, but for security purposes, it was a historical door. Um, it was it was it's it's closed off from the inside. Oh. So there's the the door is is not operable operable right now For, you know from from the street it looks like a door but it's mm -hmm. only there because it is historically certified property we we maintain the door right there's a like a window in front of it on our side within the apartment Um, any of this? Well, that window's operable. The win that window is there is a that is an operable window above it. Yes. And what's the other window next to that? This one here. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not recall if that's operable so, or if it's a big um, picture window. It it it's nothing but a but a large window that you would see in a an old historic retail space like a picture window again it's maintained to maintain the his, historic significance of the property it's not open it does not open yeah no it's a picture window yeah All right so the way out of this is through the front door through the lobby and out to the street yep and the rear apartment to the lobby and out to the street or to the backyard uh, with a direct, yeah, okay, that's. You can show that picture. I think you get a better idea of the facade. The facade picture. Yeah, do you have that, Mars? Yeah, are you not able to, can you not see the picture I have up? We can, We're but we can't see the. We see, we see the plan. We see the floor. No, plan. you see the plan. Hold on a second. My screen share is wrong. Yeah, the photo flashed up and then it went away. Then it went away uh, quickly. Can you see the street view? The no. Street the share oh, again. Sorry. You have a share. There you go. Yeah. The street view. All right, can you can you get a little closer? You, yep. you had it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I think. Give me one second. This one's better. Yep. There you go. So 
Yeah, so this is the facade. So this is the door that goes to the, into the lobby. This is that door that is that's that has the window behind it. So our apartments are here with the lobby here. And then this is the, the office space up here. And the, these are the existing units on the second, third, and fourth floors above. Yeah, there, there's actually another hallway that separates the yeah. lobby from the retail space from the, the, from the, the store uh, too from the office space on the corner yeah. it, it's the exit corridor from the from the one stair yep you want to caucus ted and eddie or ted and amy sure okay Okay, uh, we were deliberating, deliberating over that. And again, um, it would be unfair of us to make you go in and tear everything up and put a sprinkler system in because of the information you had uh, didn't require you to put a sprinkler system in. Uh, so with that, we will, we're going to uh, give, give you the variance for the what went on for your uh, building. Okay. Thank you very much for your consideration. We appreciate it. All right, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank right, you very thank much. You. All right.